Hey guys, Omni here. Welcome back for episode seven of season one of Severance. The last episode saw the gang attempt to unite and form a coup, but ended up backfiring, just pressing their hand a little too far, overextending. Now it seems like some kind of barriers are getting put up between them and the elevator, making me kind of concerned that one of the things that Petey said uh, before he died about there being these uh, severance offices in which they don't even let their employees go. Because it seems they put up some kind of like pass key wall between the offices and the the actual elevator out. Uh, in the meantime, though, after all that that has gone uh, on down below, outside, Mark has kind of found himself in with PD's contact, which seems to be a, a, somebody from within, I almost said Vought, from within Lumen that was able to bypass the chip and all that kind of stuff. We also found out they can sever people and switch people between their Innie and the Audi, even in their own homes. When we saw them with Dylan, him being an interrogator for one of the cards he left the office with or seemingly made off with. So there's a lot of weird little fun nuggets that came out of last episode that just had me really, really itching to get back in. So that's what we're going to do. So with that said, if you want to see the following three action, check it out over on Patreon or for the Marvel channel, get you access as well. It's a watch along format, so you just need to sync your own footage with the time code, so we're the entire episode. Over there, you also get to suggest and vote on what movies to react to each month. We got monthly Q&As, behind the scenes footage, trying to make it worth your while, so you sure got a way to support the channel. But guys, I'd really appreciate it if you enjoyed this reaction, so leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if not already, and a huge thank you to the team over at Prepper for helping me edit down these highlights for the channel over here. But with that all said and down the way, Let's go ahead and hop into episode seven. Here we go. Holy shit, is this my house? Daddy! What? what the fuck? End it. Man, I had to edit down that scene a bunch because it kept tripping up YouTube, man. The whole Dylan reveal scene. The procedure didn't kill Petey. If he had followed my post-op instructions and not simply run away at the first sign of sickness. So you, you, you're a doctor? Mmm. Then again, you've been severed for two years, right? So your Annie really is still just a baby. My Annie lives his own life. Ah! But he only exists because of you. And for all intents and purposes, he is you. Do you really think he's different down there? Combs his hair differently, laughs at different jokes. Well, I mean, Helly. <laughs> You brought him into this world without his permission. I'm not a bad person. I think you want to do what's right, both of you. Uh-oh. Do I know you? We work together down there. You having a chat with someone, Mark? Um, it's okay. I'm a friend. Oh! Whoa! What the fuck are you doing? Grab his arms. What? Come here. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh. Oh yeah, he's, he ain't waking up, dude. Look at that blood trail. Yeah, they can't know he's involved. Full access and it can't be tied to anyone. Take it to work tomorrow, he'll know what to do. Oh. You, give me the phone. Petey's phone, give it to me. Wow. Oh, I'll be in touch. It's gonna be okay. We'll finish what Petey started, Mark. Now get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Go, buddy! Well, we just... We just es escalated things quite a lot, but he was in, he was in, he was pretty much trapped right there. Oh yeah, he like walked out on his date. Is she still here? I, ass I would assume so. I would assume it's still the same night. Yep. Getting some water. Do you need anything? Where were you? Who, me? Yeah. Just... I heard the car. You heard a car? Um... Don't do this, buddy. I mean, I can't necessarily tell her either. Do you want me to go? Maybe. Uh... No. 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 
My lord, look at all that snow. You look troubled, Mark. Huh? Maybe we should talk later over a nice hot cup of lavender tea. Keep your tea and get your ass inside. Jack Frost certainly needs some new dandruff shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Testing their new door. The missing 7199G, Oswald, will be so delighted. I too, delighted. Oh good, now we can focus on the final preparations. That we can. Of what? You've been a great leader to this department, Bert G. Thank you. You deserve something special. Not, not a trip to the break room, I hope. <laughs> no, no, not that. Something else. Stay tuned. Somehow it feels a little scarier. What happened last night is called the overtime contingency. It's a safeguard we occasionally employ to remotely awaken workers off site. Oh, wow. It's for emergency use only. And I didn't consult Miss Cobell because she's been so stressed. Oh, and he did it again without oversight. He'd agreed to come to a thousand, which he then violated. I really wouldn't mention this to your colleagues, Dylan. This OTC is pretty neat to know. Can you tell me his name? Mm. Not knowing is probably for the best. I know this has been a tough quarter. I'm gonna see about wrestling you up some special perks. That sound good? <sighs> good man, Dylan. I don't know if that was an agreement to anything, but we'll go with that, I guess. Man, this is the second time he's done something without bringing it up to anybody else. This is so interesting, the interplay going on inside too. What is so important about that card, of all things? And everything being recorded the way it is, and his any not knowing how he got it, maybe not even what it does. God, don't get caught with it. So am I going to the... I'm here to escort you to your desk. New protocol. Because mm. yeah, you're going to lock your ass in there until your job is done. So they have bathroom access because it's in the same room as their office, at least. Are we locked in now? I prefer the phrase safely situated. Safely situated. So I lean my upper body. That is an angry looking baby. Top of the neck, just so. She's working on her, her other cover today. And this, show the baby the areola and we latch. <laughs> now you Oh! Try. Bob! Now do it. Yes, Eleanor, yes, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, baby sips. Baby sips. <laughs> oh. She makes it weirder. Did you say you need to get to the store? They can do without me. I'm having fun. Besides, it's not as if you have a fleet of nannies and manservants coming to take care of you, do you? Sure, she just mentioned her store, so I guess it's baked in that she multitasks. Well, no, but it was weird. Because I saw her again at the park a few days later, and she 100% didn't remember me. What a snoot. <laughs> okay. Mark's company, they say that they only sever people for work. But I was thinking, like, what if you wanted a baby, but you didn't want to, I don't know. Oh. But I don't think I'd remember even oh. Clark Cable if I'd just given birth. So. Made another version of her experience in it so she didn't have to, right? Is that what she's implying? The soap label? Shouldn't there be labels on the soap dispensers saying soap? There's never been that. We all know it's soap. Seems like an O and D question. Earth. Mm. MDE. By reaching 75% refinement on Sienna, you have earned for you and your fellow refiners five minute music dance experience. What? <laughs> Excellent choice. Should have gone for the castanets. Mm. I choose. Defiant Jazz. It's the name of the episode. Mm. Mm. 
<laughs> oh, he's gonna find the card. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh! That Papa Bear instinct came out. You've done it now, Dylan. I'm reporting this to Miss Cobell. Yeah, you want to go see her together? Oh. Oh. Will you? Can you? The music dance experience is officially canceled. <laughs> that angry flipping of the key card. After I went up the elevator, I woke up outside in my house. I saw my son. He was so happy to see me. Then Melchick pulled him off and it happened so fast, I just keep trying to remember more. Aww. We could use this. If they can wake us up on the outside, what's to stop us from doing it to ourselves? We can find whatever they use to control it and, you know, commandeer it. Take their Audi's life. We are. Ellie, forgive me, but that's perverse. We're innies. Plus, the controls are surely somewhere we can't access. Mmm. Greener's key card? In my pocket during the music dance experience, I think. I must have had it with me when I came in today. Why did your Audi have the key card of our head of security? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, this shit's getting good. I think it's time for a field trip. I mean, it's all on camera, though. Who's to say there are security guards? I've only ever seen Grainer. That's true. We can do this. Wow, let's go. Oh, and Selvig's not here either to keep an eye on them. Great timing. So without the security dude with Milchik off, probably tending to his wounds and Selvig not even in today because she's playing her undercover gig. Anybody we know would be watching is not here to be watching. Maybe in the security room they can scrub the, the footage as well. Oh no, oh no. Irving, what are you doing? What about the plan? I, I'm sorry, Mark. I can't hear you, I'll be back. I mean, what? Can't fight love, man. Let him go. Uh-oh. She's on her way back. Let's go, Bell. She won't come here. Oh, okay, it's great, you know that. Let's get the fuck out of here. They gotta get back before she can get to a monitor. No, Irving. Whoever killed Mr. Grainer is probably the same person who reintegrated Peter Kilmer. The board reminds you that reintegration has Reintegration not... happened, and I have the data to prove it. I would be happy to share my findings in person without intermediaries. Ooh. There it is, she's making her play. And we'll be available to meet with you at the Egan Family Gala next week to discuss this further. Details to come. I look forward to receiving them. God damn, that power play. But what of Irving? I was gonna see that they were getting rewarded and they're not locked in. I mean, they do. I don't know. One of us has to stay behind. Okay? Yeah, after work, I can do it. I've already been out, so it's only fair. Oh. It's not about strength. Yeah, see, there are two lever switches that you have to hold open during the actual procedure, and they're on either side of the door. Mm. I can do it. Bye bye, Bert. How about a round of applause for the man of the hour? Oh. 
they promoting him to another department or retiring him? Goodbye, Bert. <laughs> Greetings, designers. And one refiner. Yeah, he's gonna be confused about that. I do know how I feel. Every day when I come from being with you, I come home feeling tired but fulfilled. I feel... Oh. I'm certain you will remain with me in spirit in some deep yet completely unaccessible corner of my mind. Mm. The impression you've left... Oh, Irving. Right now I have no recollection of actually ever meeting you, no idea of your names. Uh, anyway, I just yeah. want to say thank you all. So fucked up. Bon voyage. <laughs> Wait, doesn't that mean that he, he dies? That's their Everything idea of death? Yeah. Bert's Audi is retiring. It'll happen to you too someday. You smug motherfucker. Oh. You're not severed. You walk out of here with your memories. You carry them home with you every night. No one can rip them away from you. Snuff them out like you never existed. That's enough. You will go back to MDR. Mr. Milchick, please. It'd be so wonderful to have him here. <sighs> Mr. Milchick. It's just the timing of it, though, man. That's all say goodbye to Bird. The Any Retirement Song. <sighs> this is so fucked up, dude. Let's burn this place to the ground. <laughs> yes! Whoa! Holy fuck! That's her. Gone. Alexa, you know, we can, we'll talk all about Gemma. She was great. She was. Bye. What the hell? I mean, he is being a little bit of an ass. Like, she understood, like, what he's going through and all that stuff. So, like, his, like, bravado there being this kind of mask. Because, again, he's not being truthful about what it, what's actually going on and bothering him. And she can tell that he's still being, he's got that disingenuousness back on. He's being fake. Because that's not what she was getting at or wanting. My wife was extraordinary. Wait, wait. That looks like, that looked like, I don't. Yeah, I mean, that looks like Miss Casey. Am I reading that right? Oh my God. <laughs> this episode and then the ending. Oh my God. He thinks she's dead. I mean, if that's right and I'm not mincing faces right now, it was a different angle, but it just like the eyes and the smile just made me think of Miss Casey. I mean, why else hold out on the reveal of the face if it was going to be somebody we haven't seen? And then... And why... What fucking... Uh, Selvig came in, took that candle, and then had him, during his little therapy session with Miss Casey, light that very same candle? And if she's severed... And he's severed here... I mean, he out here thinks she's dead. And on the inside, he doesn't know who she is. So they're kept from each other. What the fuck is going on? Why? What the hell? Why fake her death out here? And then that could tie into what Petey was saying about the people that are permanently severed and working on these places where they're not allowed to go. Maybe their, outer, their Audis are 
feigned dead? Is that what we're learning? Because it's almost like the reverse of what's going on with the Innies. When they retire, they die. They no longer exist. They return to the outside world to cease to be, to never be activated again. Oh my God. I mean, I could be jumping to completely different conclusions because the hell I jumped at the fact that I thought that the uh, one of the paramedics was the security guard, but that was not the case at the time. But I'm pretty sure that's Miss Casey. The gym is Miss Casey because that would add up and that would just make this so much more fucked up. I don't know what to do with that information right now. But the revelation that this can be done remotely as well and that the implication also, that his sister is uncovered or may possibly uncovered is that people just out and about can be severed for different things. If she's right about this woman she met at that retreat, severed herself for the experience so of giving birth so she didn't have to experience it herself, made uh, an alternate version of herself do that, and that's why when she met her at the park, once the birthing was already complete, she didn't remember any other conversations or who she was. And they are that campaigning for that to become a more frequent thing. And it's just this weird existential cycle of creation, birth, and death, because if you reflect back on what uh, the doctor who was uh, that Mark was meeting with in the beginning was talking about, like, you brought him into this world without his consent. You gave life to him, you know, and he is you. He's not you, whatever. You can run your gymnastics around that mentally however you want to. But at the end of the day, he's your responsibility on some level, which is also interesting because she also puts like, hey, he could be very much just like you. He could be very different. He could be infantile. He's only two years old, technically. And then you had the realization of what happened with Heli and her Audi and the way she thinks of her, views her, this like dehumanization of their inside selves. And then I get the dangers of that from the lumen side of things. If they crack open that egg, even just a little bit, you know, about their Audi, that, you know, it makes the sustainability of their, their inside work, it, it just puts it in jeopardy because now Dylan's got a taste of his outside life. He knows he's got a kid. He got to feel that hug from his child before being pulled back. And he's trying not to lose that thought because that could be the last time he ever sees him. So there's this parental pull that is innately there, but now he can never touch that, reach out, feel that again. And it's this destructive thing. And then like the, the, the difference in like Bert's reaction to his retirement to Irving's it lit a fire under him about this because he's like you're just celebrating his death in, a, in essence and that weird eulogy uh, retirement speech from his Audi who's like I'll remember you always except the fact that I won't at all because I don't even know who the fuck you are so and you saw like the the, the people were trying to like you know they were like they, we don't know how to react to that Kind of hurts, kind of sucks, but then they're still happy for Bert. So it's this, ugh. But yeah, dude, we got a rebellion building up. That key card uh, is coming into play. They know where the security room is. They know where the toggle is, and they theoretically know how to turn, uh, break down this barrier even while they're out. Even though Mark has missed the opportunity to reintegrate, and though there's still some dangers then, and apparently PD disregarded those. So maybe there is a safe way to go about it, but Petey just didn't follow any of her instructions. Maybe she would be fine if he had, but maybe what he knew was too sensitive, too dangerous, and I mean, he can't just be out and about like this, too. They wouldn't let him. So, like, I, it's it's a very interesting situation to see what, what, what the alternative could be. Maybe there's a different possibility for Mark if he does in, reintegrate. Oh, it's such a brilliant way that they revealed that, too, for, you know, the Gemma reveal. And I do feel bad. I, I forget her name about the woman he's been going on this date with because she genuinely cares and she's been very patient. But he just he takes the right steps and then he takes he, he just takes these rebounds and like wrong turns and just botches it all again. And I understand where she's coming from. I understand where he's coming from as well. It's just a really surreal place to be in. Yes, I can't really be forthright about everything that's going on too, because it is very shady and knowing things that are going on right now could very much 
get somebody in trouble or hurt. So we'll see what happens there, but damn, dude. Uh, on top of that, Selvig has, you know, challenged the board. Now that her security man is dead, they don't know where he is, but they, or I guess they found his body if they confirmed he's dead. But he's, they know he's dead, and they're trying to put this on her, and they're again, they're trying to deny the fact that re reintegration is possible, but she's like, bitch, I have proof I'm right, that this is a real thing. That's why she was holding on to that. But then again, Milchek has also been doing a bunch of shit behind her back without any kind of approval, oversight, or anything like that. There's a lot of weird shit going on, both above ground and below. And I just can't wait to see what the, the conclusion is going to be. We only have two episodes to go for this season to see how this all culminates. But it's 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 thrilling. Ah, oh, things are really bubbling right now. It's getting juicy. But guys, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to you. Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed this reaction. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if not already. Remember, if you want to see the following reaction, check it out over on Patreon or if you've got Marvel channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Share, Ryan Karen, York, Corscon, Margaret Grace, Melita, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey Hale, M. Sephiroth, Jake and Trill, Eric Official, and Amy Becca. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. But that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.